Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Art of the Possible with Crossviews. Um, before we get started, I just want to make sure that you all know that we do want this to be interactive. So please post any questions that you may have throughout, and we will do our best to answer them. We will ask for questions at the end. Um, but go ahead, and if you have anything you want to ask, please ask away in the chat. So as we get started, I want you guys to think back to probably 20, 30 years ago when we used to have to print off physical maps. I don't know if you remember MapQuest, TomTom, Garmin's or any of the other just physical maps. Um, but years ago, whenever I used to go in and have somewhere I needed to go, I would physically print off a map. And then I'd be on my way and I'd hit a detour or a road would be closed and I would have no idea where I needed to go. So thinking through that, if you don't have a plan laid out and you don't have a plan in place and something unexpected comes up and you don't know how to pivot, what do you do? Data really can drive our decisions and chart our course. So we need to understand our destination. We need to understand what we're trying to accomplish and to mitigate those possible risks to make sure we're prepared. And so how do we do that? We have the right tools, we have the right platforms and the right processes in place to do that. All right, so who is Crossview? So just a, a brief introduction of us as Crossviews. Um, Crossviews has been a ServiceNow partner for a, a very long time since ServiceNow was uh, a kind of a, a bit more of a, a less the household name for sure. So being in the platform that long, we have over 3,000 implementations. Uh, we have over 100 ServiceNow consultants uh, across uh, the globe, really. So we have representation on the call here from the UK, from the USA and Canada as well. Um, we've been in business over 20 years. Certifications in the service ecosystem are a huge thing. And basically, they're the top level of that certification are the certified master architects, also known as CMAs. Um, these CMAs are the trusted partners that um, we partner with different organizations, our customers, to basically assist in that value journey um, and those roadmaps. So we're lucky enough at Crossfuse to have five CMAs. Uh, there are at most 200 in the world, and a good number of those are actually at ServiceNow themselves. So in the partner ecosystem, having five CMAs um, all, but with an organization our size is a complete partner. So there's a variety of partner statuses within ServiceNow, at least right there at the top. And we've been happy to be part of this ecosystem for a very long time. So where we sit. There are a few different partners in the ServiceNow ecosystem, as you may be aware. There are the smaller ones, the more tactical ones that are specialized on a set of skills. Uh, there are also the large SIs, you know, that have a, a very, a very large global presence, but they may also do many, many, many things. Service our, our cross views, we position ourselves in the middle of that. We're in that unique, unique position where we are a pure play ServiceNow partner and that true journey partner is in the middle. So this allows us to have the expertise we have a seat at the table at ServiceNow. We have product specialties that we know all those different areas of the platform that are very, very important. And then of course, moving forward, um, we are that journey partner that we can really be flexible and agile with you as we move forward on your maturity journey. So what we do best, we've talked about implementation, that's huge. And we've done a lot of that. We also have a support arm as well. And basically from there, we're able to assist, we can be, the admins, if you need us to be the admins, or we can come alongside you and kind of ramp up your skill set or you know, assist with that lift if there is need at that time. We're going to talk today about advisory. Advisory is kind of around that road mapping, or maybe it's OCM, but basically the kind of the other stuff that's not part of that implementation piece that we're going to move towards and kind of come alongside you and help them mature and get the value out of the platform. Yeah, so I'll run through a few introductions now then. So nice to meet you guys. My name is Dan Edwards. And as I said, I'm based out of the UK. I'm the delivery manager for the advisory practice here. So what that means is that I'll oversee all of the delivery of our strategic and advisory engagements throughout EMEA, throughout all of the European region. 
I've been in the ServiceNow space for around six to seven years with Crossviews for four of those. And prior to that, I used to work in the legal and the healthcare industries. So I bring a lot of experience from different industries, different ways of working. And ultimately, what drives me is I like to understand businesses. I like to understand what your challenges are. I like to understand what the opportunities are for growth and improvement and ultimately how we can leverage technology to do that. And I'm very grateful to be one of the few certified master architects. And as Dan said, we have a, a huge proportion of those within our company and we love to leverage those skill sets to be able to show you the value of the platform. I'm really looking forward to going through all of that today with you. And hi, I'm Daniel Linton. I'm uh, the delivery manager of Platform Strategy here at Crossviews. I've been on the platform, the ServiceNow platform for nine years, two as a customer, and then over on the consulting side here at Crossviews for the last seven years. Prior to that, I was a partner at a, or not partner, I was a consultant at a large um, organization um, outside of ServiceNow. So I've been kind of in that consulting IT realm for over 20 years. And my name is Allison Shirey. I'm the VP of Global Delivery. I have been in the ecosystem for almost 14 years and have been on the customer side. I've been on the partner side. Um, I almost meet the qualifications of a CMA at Crossviews. My name is not Dan. We have another Dan as well. Um, but no, I'm very happy to be here. And just like Dan and Daniel, um, we are really excited to show you guys what you can do um, with ServiceNow. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about where are we going? We have to know where we're going in order to get there. So where are we going? How do we get there? And then most importantly, probably of these two is how do we stay on track when things do not go maybe as planned? So I'm going to hand it over to Dan and we're going to talk about where we're going. Yeah, perfect. And first of all, just put up a few challenges on screen here. And the reason for this is that we recognize a lot of these in the customers that we speak to. This is the type of work that I do day in, day out, and whether it's delivering it or talking to customers to, to scope that work, these are the things that we see happen again and again. And I'm sure some of these challenges will resonate with you, if not all of them. And the types of things that we see are customers who recognize the power of ServiceNow. They're seeing their peers, their contemporaries using ServiceNow. They're seeing them use it to great effect. So they know that it's the answer to something, but they're not really sure what the question is. And they need some help understanding how can we point at the right outcomes, at the right future, in order to make sure that we can leverage this platform in the right way and deliver the right value. We also have those customers who are incredibly innovative. They want to grow, they want to transform, they want to really push the boundary of what they're doing. They have so many ideas and often a really complex environment, a complex technology enterprise there. And so the question there is less about does service now have a place but what is the place for service now here how can we find the right fit for it because it's not the solution to every problem but where we can come in and help and use our experience is to identify where it is the right solution for the right problems and how it can interlink best with the rest of your enterprise and lastly the one at the bottom especially for customers who may have had the platform for a while is well we've had it and we're unsure of the value it's giving us we're not able to identify that and because we can't identify it it's really difficult to identify new value if we can't do that, we can't gain investment in the platform. We can't grow our platform teams and we can't expand into new areas. So ultimately it becomes a bit of a dead end. And that's where the first bit I want to talk to you about today is so important, which is the strategy. As Alison said, it's the where are we going? Because without understanding the direction we want to point in, it's really difficult for us to get anywhere. And most of our customers who are really successful, both our customers, general service now customers, but customers of technology everywhere, the ones who are truly successful have a strategy and they have a roadmap. And so that's what I want to talk to you first about today is the strategy. When we look at it, there's a few key pillars we talk about when we come in there. The first is the vision, which is what are we doing? What is the organization all about? And often you'll have these statements, you'll have these sort of goals of a company to potentially be the market leader in its in its area. It can be quite high, uh, high and broad statements, but it gives you a goal to aim towards that everything else starts to feed off. And it's fundamentally important that you understand what type of business you're trying to be and what type of problems you're trying to solve before you start to think about the technology that's going to help you there. And off the back of the vision, we then start to think about the drivers that are going to get us there. To be that market leader could mean different things to different companies. To some companies, it might mean leveraging the newest technologies. It might mean looking into AI. How can we become more efficient and more cutting edge with the use of AI? For others, it may be focused more on the customer experience and retaining the loyalty of your existing customers and growing that customer base. And there may be levers there that you need to pull. 
Each of these are going to be different for different companies. There'll be similar themes that go throughout all of you, but what's important to your company is exactly that. It's important to you. And that's what we help you to figure out. The outcomes are vital that come off the back of this, because if we're not able to measure success, if we're not able to see where we are now and where we want to be and track that progress, then how on earth are we going to justify the investment that's already been put into the platform and then justify any future investment as well? So where we help you here is by looking at what is important to your business, not just what can we measure, but what can we measure and that's actually going to make a difference because then we can actually start to understand what technological implementations can we provide to make you aim towards those outcomes. And last but not least, there is priorities. It's prioritization. What a strategy enables you to do is understand what is important and why it's important. And it enables you to put those things in the right order, which is what we'll come on to shortly in terms of road mapping. But it just gives you that overlying structure to put that in place. And shortly, I'll go through how we approach this and why that's a good approach and some of the artifacts that we produce from this. But before we go into that, I'd like to just open up to our other co-presenters here. I mean, Alison, of these pillars, which of them do you find to be particularly important here? Yeah, what I find interesting with these types of engagement is no offense to any C-levels on the call, but there are a lot of times where they have a vision or they have priorities that they don't realize don't actually align to what their boots on the ground or their people in the weeds really see. And so as we go through this exercise, we actually talk to people throughout the organization. So we understand the pain points, we understand the challenges and can help them evaluate what truly is a priority right now. So it brings more awareness to what's truly going on so that we make sure that the vision that that C-level or stakeholder has really aligns to what they're trying to accomplish within the boots on the ground. So I think that part is always very interesting to me whenever we do these. Cool, and Daniel? Yeah, so one thing you kind of touched on briefly was kind of something measurable, right? So looking at what KPIs we can use at this stage to measure where we are now, so that we can look at later on down the road to see where we're, we're aiming towards, to see if we're making progress towards that those, those goals. Um, sometimes what we see in organizations is like, oh, here's our book of KPIs and there's 400 KPIs. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a smaller set, something that we can measure um, that's going to be three or four KPIs that we can look at and aim towards that and use those as kind of our, our ongoing uh, benchmark to see where we're, if we're progressing towards our, our desired outcome and our vision. I think that's a really key point. I and mean, it's something I've had from my experience there is that, especially with organizations who may have had the platform for a while or are used to measuring things and used to operating in that way, is they think that hundreds of KPIs is, represents maturity. It represents a, a good understanding of what they're doing and, and how to get there. But actually, it, it creates noise. It creates confusion. And it, it stops you seeing the real insights there. And the idea of, can you strip this down to a handful? because those things are going to be really important. And if you can impact those, then you can make a real difference to what you're trying to do as an organization. That can be quite a big leap sometimes, but it's a really important one to get your head around because without doing that, you're still just going to be spread all over the place and your chances of really racketing in and, and affecting something you want to affect become far, far more difficult. So how do we go about doing this? I mean, we, we obviously operate across the globe, so we do these things remotely, but we also do these things in person. And, and with, like with everything we do, it's highly collaborative, and we bring all of our consulting skill and expertise into these engagements, and particularly when we've got people like Alison, Daniel, myself, and our other CMAs. The experience we have and the training from ServiceNow to make sure that we, we bring everything we can and focus on the valuable output is, is really where we start. And we'll run workshops that will be all about understanding the things on screen. What's important to your business? What drivers can we leverage? And how are we going to measure our success? And in some cases, this will be working from something quite mature, something that pre-exists and something that we have to tease out and refine with you. In other cases, it might be something that's quite fresh and you don't quite know what these things look like. And so you're looking to us to help guide you through that. The important thing is, is this is your output. Ultimately, it's something for you and your business to leverage. And so you have to be engaged in that process. But we're there to help guide you with all of our experience through implementations and advisory work to actually get you to that output. And what does it look like? So I've got a, an example one here I'm going to show you. And at first, it can look obviously very concise. It's very simple. And that's exactly the point of it. If you can't demonstrate on a single page why you're doing something and how you're going to do it and what you're going to achieve with it, then particularly when you start going up to the senior level, the executive, the C-suite, you're not going to be able to convey the right message. And so what we try to do is make sure that you can condense that strategic vision 
down into a single statement or two. We don't want that to be conflated. We want that to be nice, clear and concise. The drivers that then come off it start to help us understand what lanes of work are we going to be working with here. So, for example, the one on the screen here, we're looking at things like quality, efficiency, governance and visibility. This enables us to start building in streams of work that lead directly back to those drivers. So we understand what type of work we're doing and why we're doing it and how it feeds into the vision. And then the outcomes, as I say, absolutely key to start looking at the outcomes. And I'll touch in a minute about the importance that we place on data. But you'll notice on the right, it's only at the very end of this and only at a high level at this point do we really care about the technological solution. Everything up to this stage is about what are you trying to do? What opportunities are there? What challenges are there? And how are we going to understand if we've been successful? And it's only when we understand that picture should we start thinking about any kind of technology, whether that's service now or otherwise. But if we don't understand the first bits, it's really difficult to get the right answers to those questions as we move forward. And I know, Alison, these things have been very popular with, with your clients. And so is there anything in particular you'd like to pick out from the approach or the, or the output? Yeah, so what's been really helpful, at least in the States, has been helping people understand the why. A lot of the times it was just an edict from above that we're, we're moving to service now, but they don't understand why we're moving or what we're going to get out of it. How is it going? What's in it for me? And so aligning these to the vision of the company along with the strategy behind it helps them understand, okay, I understand why we're moving to this and what I'm going to get out of it and how it's going to help what I do. And getting that why, I'm a why person. I need to understand the why before change happens. And it also helps drive that adoption that we'll talk about shortly as well. Thanks. And Daniel, anything to add on this one? I think you've covered everything. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, a, it's, it's, as I say, it's a simple articulation of something that's very complex and very multi-layered. And there are things that go behind this as well that, well, certainly really interest us, but hopefully you as part of the process as well, because the data, you know, Alison mentioned the data in her introductory story about how important it is to be able to access it and to be able to gain insight from it. And so what I put on screen now is an example of how we try to interrogate the data within your organization to understand where the opportunities are for improvement and what those outcomes could be. And the example we have here was around a company that wanted to really try and leverage automation to effectively increase the efficiency with which they're able to deal with their tickets and ultimately save agent days. And so we interrogate that data to understand where those high volume opportunities are, where there are high touch points, how long it's taking on average to deal with these, roughly what kind of efficiency gain we'd expect to see in those areas, and then how does that translate into agent days? Now, of course, there's a question of realization that comes behind that. You, just because you could save these days, how are you going to deal with that? Are you going to ultimately save headcount or are you going to reprioritize their work into more value added areas? And again, that differs depending on the organization. But the key is the data and interrogating that data. And that's where we spend a lot of time to understand how do you work and what's really important for you? Because without having that, we don't have a clear picture of what those key outcomes are going to be how we're going to measure them and what's a realistic target and a realistic goal. Because if that single one pager is something that's not realistic and not relevant to you, then it's not valuable. And we always make sure that we produce something that is valuable and actionable so that you can take that forward into the next stage. And the next stage really is around how do we implement this, right? We're talking about the strategy and that's going to tell us why are we doing it? That's great. But now we under need to understand the what we're going to do. So I'll hand you over to Daniel to talk about that. All right. Yeah. So the next challenge question that we typically get is, you know, what's stopping us from being successful? So you may have this platform for a while, but, you know, how do I get people to adopt this? And this question can be asked by, you know, someone's on the kind of greenfield that's looking at this from a brand new, you know, just started with ServiceNow. What does this mean? But also even more valuable are the customers that have had ServiceNow for a while and just want to kind of have that direction moving forward. So it's a question that's often asked from that side. So at this point, we have a few other pillars kind of on the next stage around how do we get there? What's, what's the plan? So we have our, um, our current state, we have where we want to go, our vision, and in between that is a plan. And there's a few pillars here that we want to talk about at this time. First one being governance and OCM. So governance sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap. People think of this as a lot of overhead, something else to add on top, um, bureaucratic or whatever that might be. What governance is for us when we talk about governance on the ServiceNow platform, is to provide a decision-making framework. We want to allow people to make the decisions within those guardrails to enable them to move forward and 
basically to, to cut out some of that red tape so they have that decision uh, making freedom within those those guardrails so what that means typically is is you have a kind of a strategy side we wanted to obviously look towards strategy and then below that as far as that we're prioritizing everything what does it look like as far as demand what are we going to work on what, what's prioritized there all the way down to the technical side how can we maintain a stable secure platform uh, being the service now instance so that's what governance is is to us and there's a lot more we can talk about there but we're going to kind of park that to the side we're going to move on organizational change management also known as ocm is really around the adoption of the platform so another key part um, the technology part we can do we've done that three three thousand plus times but sometimes the harder part is the adoption of that technology having the technology in place, the product, the solution in place, but not having the adoption by your user community or whoever this is targeting, really is not going to provide any value. I can remember my first smartphone was a Palm Pre, and I thought it was great. It did all these cool things until I went to the App Store, and there was like 10 apps on there. So I had no adoption. There was no apps. So unfortunately, that technology has disappeared. But you know, just an example of without kind of that adoption, we're not going to have uh, the use of the platform. Moving into road mapping, so we talked a bit about, you know, having that plan in the middle. This is what road mapping truly is. And it's not so necessarily aligned to, um, you know, order of operations or project work. It's going to be very much value aligned. So we want to align that to our value. There may be dependencies that we need to look at here um, on other, basically, implementations. But really, this can be truly value aligned. And we're going to look at an example of that on the next slide. And then from the visibility side, this is to kind of look at what we're working on now so you may be in in the shoes of hey i submitted all this work why is my work not getting actioned at this point in time but with the visibility of that you can look at okay well this is being prioritized because it's a strategic objective and it's top priority that's why so just having that visibility for your demands and all that work that's coming in um that's huge and then finally the vision value and outcome so aiming toward that that endpoint that vision and our desired outcomes we're always going to try to tie our work to that and basically that roadmap is going to give us a map towards that as well I'm going to pass it over to allison and dan anything you want to add to this yeah so what my customers seem to really like about this once we go through this activity um, we all know budgets are hard especially in the economy we live in today and so what this allows us to do is we're able to plan this out it can be a multi-year multi-quarter um, it gives you the idea of what do I need to budget for based on my priorities, based on what I'm trying to accomplish? And so you have all of that at your disposal to make sure that your budgets are in place for licensing, for services. Um, and you have that plan to go to. And Dan mentioned the visibility. When I worked on the customer side, there were times where I would get very frustrated that my stuff wasn't the most important. And had we had something like this in place, it would have been very easy for them to say, hey, Allison, your stuff doesn't align to what we're trying to get to this year, but your stuff is important to support our strategy for next year. So having the roadmap is multi-purpose for budgets, for making sure everyone's on the same page. Dan, what about you? Yeah, I mean, a couple of points I'd really like to bring up and visibility, one of them, we we spoke before and we looked at all this and saying about exactly your experience there, right? When I'm, when I'm within the business, I'm a stakeholder there and I want some stuff doing and it's in a queue. If I don't understand why or where it is or how it's a priority, it's very difficult for me to potentially accept that it's not being done. But if I can clearly see that actually what I'm asking for doesn't relate to strategic priorities of the business, it becomes far easier for me to either understand what might be and reframe my asks or to accept the fact that okay it is a it is a lower priority and it, it introduces that clarity to everyone involved but particularly where we find a lot of this useful is when it starts going back upstream and you talk about budgets and and obviously there's there's often that approval that needs to come to continue investing in this product and what these collection of artifacts give you is it gives you that clear articulation of this is what we're doing this is why we're doing it this is what we'd like to do next and this is what's coming down the pipe so actually when somebody asks at that c-suite level the top executive level where's my money gone you've been spending this money how's it been going you can very clearly say well this is what we've done and we did this because you said this was important and we've been able to make change in these areas which is influencing this outcome and it's a very simple answer to those questions that then evolves into new conversations about that's that's fantastic but then how can you help me change these outcomes how can you help me improve these outcomes and 
I can do that if you give me some more investment in the platform and you back us to do these bits and pieces. So it, it goes into that whole evolution of the platform because we are now clear about what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. I think Dan, governance is, oh yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. We have a question from mm. the audience. So I'm going to let you take this one. How long do you spend analyzing the prospect's data before coming up with a solution? It's a kind of piece of string answer, unfortunately, in that sense. And it depends on what it is you're trying to achieve. So, for example, on the on the automation piece there, the one that I flagged up earlier on, there was a very clear ask around where can we find the efficiencies from there? And so in that case, we were probably two to three days sort of looking through, combing through the data within the instance, first of all, but also taking anecdotal evidence from the people who work on those desks about well, where are your pain points? I think Alison might have mentioned earlier on about boots on the ground being so important is actually seeing how people work, not just looking at the the actual data right there is really important. So it does depend on the question. And if it's something that is particularly complex and particularly wide ranging, it might re require a longer period of time. Um, but something like that would have been a few days that we would have poked around to to get an understanding of that. Thanks, Alison. Um, the other thing I was going to say was around the governance limb. And um, I said at the beginning about how I do this kind of stuff day in, day out. And strategy road mapping is a big part of that. But the other main pieces of work that we're involved in and talking to customers about all the time is always governance. And it's something that is, along with the strategy, I'd say, is one of those key pieces that if you don't have it, it will either cause you problems or it'll at least prevent you getting from the destination that you could have got to in the same way or faster and release the same amount of value. And as Dan said, it's often viewed in that bureaucratic overhead. It's something that slows down and, and it can be if it's implemented incorrectly. But where we spend a lot of time is to make sure that it's not that. It should be an enabler. And, and again, when we spoke when we were prepping these and Dan used the word freedom in there is it's that to me is what it can be. It, it gives you the freedom partly to say no to people. So when Alison comes asking for all these things that need to be done, it's very easy to say, no, I'm afraid that's not a priority because you've now got that from the highest level in your business to say what is important. So rather than spending time on this, rather than putting it in a pipe and thinking about it, you don't have to because you've got a framework that allows you to do that. And then when you have things that are relevant, you've got the right, the right screening process, the right questions to ask the right stakeholders to get involved to understand how important is this how big is it how risky is it how much value is it going to give to us and to get the answers to those questions quickly which will enable you to build the roadmap and execute your strategy and that's something we spend a lot of time with whether that's on advising how mature your governance is at the moment how you can increase that maturity over time how we can supplement your org to to give you skilled resources like ourselves into some of your governance boards uh, it's a major part of what we do and you know we're always happy to have a conversation with this outside of these sessions but it's, it's worth mentioning because it really helps pin the whole of the strategy and roadmap and an overall health of your instance together dan back to you yeah thank you for that all right, so let's look at an example of a roadmap. So this is kind of a typical output we have as a, as a result of the roadmap. So let's think of this as we've already been through the earlier part where we've taken kind of the vision to the strategies to the business objectives, getting down to you know what what we can implement to drive to that that success. So in here we kind of bring that all together in a bit of a different lens. We typically look at this as a two-year plan. We try to stretch it for two years, um, and this is not something we just you know take frame, put on the wall, and look at once a week. This is something that's kind of a living document because we may have different headwinds that are going to hit that we need to reevaluate. So very important to understand that this is not something we just set and then in two years we're going to come back and look at it. It's something we need to look at over time. Hopefully not major revisions, but at the same time, to have no revisions is probably not realistic either. Um, so looking at this roadmap, you'll see uh, the, the timeline. We also have the kind of the capabilities of the platform we're going to leverage and then the benefits down, downstream that we're gonna look at here. There can be dependencies between these items as well. So that's kind of what helps with the order of operations as far as the implementation side as well. And then of course, with the different swim lanes, we basically can look at that um, for what we're trying to accomplish uh, on this page here as well. Allison, Dan, anything you wanna to add to this? Uh, the one thing that I'll add is we have a lot of customers that will take this and, and if there's no dependencies, they will kind of slice and dice this and choose to do certain swim lanes at different times. So it's not that you would have to do all of this at once, 
we can take different approaches to it. But we do like to tell you where there are dependencies and what you'll be lacking if you choose to do like, say, the blue swim lane versus the red swim lane. So we do give you those cautions and those risks that you'll be taking on if you choose to do that. But this is an output of all of our discovery, all of our conversations um, to make sure that you're getting what it is you're looking for. The other thing I hear a lot from customers is we don't know what we don't know. That's what we're here for. We're here to tell you that if you have this problem, this part of ServiceNow will help solve that for you. Yeah, I think from my perspective, I mean, one thing I like about this is it is simple. It's simple and clear and it shows you a long period of time and it shows you the things that you're going to do and the things you're going to unlock by doing it. And so it's not a low level implementation plan, but it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to show you how you're going to deliver on your strategy, the component pieces that'll get you there. And so for those conversations around show the organization what we're going to be doing with the platform and when, it does that. For the conversations that go back up to the budget holders and things, show me when you're going to deliver on those things. Again, it does that and it does that over a good period of time. The other thing I like around the swim laning, you'll see that they're not the technologies that we focus on here and and just to pick on something of that second swim lane the employee digital experience we've got hr and it for example starting off uh, or, or running in parallel in that same lane it all goes back to those those drivers and those things that we identify as part of the strategy because those themes are the things that are going to deliver the value for you those themes are what ultimately provide your vision and help you deliver on that. And so we should be delivering within those themes. And that's how we look to to put work together so that you can recognize outcomes and you don't recognize just technological building blocks and, and applications and features and functions, because that's not where you're going to get value. And the value piece, last of all, again, we, we hammer home why it's so important. But what we can do with the roadmaps as well is, is articulate what you're actually going to be achieving with each of those deployments. So when we talk about there's an outcome here that's the one we're going to be trying to influence is actually this deployment is going to start to affect that one because that's the value that it delivers this is the capability that does that and then you're going to be able to start measuring the improvements in those areas so i find these fantastic to work with because like i say they're simple they're clear concise but they give you the right plan to be able to execute that strategy and able to unlock the value in the platform and something else that dan said earlier on a call that really resonated with us is that this is not just a series of projects, right? So there's, it, it's it's the two-year plan as a whole. And we also include on that bottom lane, kind of the health and well-being of the platform as well. So, you know, all this work to, to improve the platform is great and everything, but we need to maintain the health of the platform on an ongoing basis to make sure it's current, it's upgraded, and we get the, all that new value that's getting released from ServiceNow over the time, all those enhancements, those are coming to the platform as well through upgrades and, and everything else. Yeah, I think it's true. And, and it leads us on to the next area we're going to talk about, which is, OK, that's great. We, we have a look at why we're doing something, what's important to the business. And we've had a look at what we're going to do about it. So as we stand here today, 30th of November, we now know what we're going to do from the start of 2024. But the question there, you know, the challenge that brings up is, well, how? How are we going to implement that? How are we going to actually operationalize everything that needs to sit around it? And how do we retain focus on it? Because it can be tiring, right? You can get fatigued from it. It can be a, a big mindset shift to come from a place of whether it's an underfunded platform previously, whether it's a brand new platform or whatever it might be to actually get to that stage of realizing that this isn't something that you just set it and forget about it. It's something that is living, breathing, growing. And in order to maximize your value from it, you need to have a proper practice focus on doing so. And that could be small things that just continue to happen throughout. It doesn't need to be anything big, but it does take commitment and it does take a focus to do that. And the key pillars we look at when we when we think about that ongoing success with this start with planning. So going through your strategy, going through your roadmap is planning, but you also need to plan for the, <laughs> the sort of unplannable in a sense you need to plan to be flexible when we when we think about the environment around the world at the moment there's and particularly in the uk obviously we we know we're suffering with very high inflation and have been costs have been soaring customer asks and what we need to provide them changes because of that and so what was a priority yesterday what was a direction yesterday may not be the same today and obviously with the covid pandemic from a few years ago that lasted for a very very long time that shifted everything overnight and to be locked onto something just because you've planned it isn't good enough. We need to be able to move. We need to be able to adapt. Um, and even in a, 
a fairly static environment with none of these external factors, which are always going to be there. But if we assume they're not, ServiceNow updates regularly. You know, ServiceNow is going to bring new things in. And maybe something that you had previously architected and built is now an out of the box feature. Something that you had an idea for, but you couldn't afford to go down or didn't want to take on the technical debt of doing it again is now available from ServiceNow. So having a, a different lens on that and understanding the flexibility is, is really key. And it leads into that reprioritization. Just because you say something is important today and then tomorrow you realize, oh, actually, that's down at P5, P6 on my list, doesn't mean you were wrong to have it at P1 before at all. There's no there's no problem with changing things. There's, in fact, I think it's a good thing because you're recognizing that you're focused on what are we trying to deliver? You're not focused on what have we already set in stone? And you really need to have that mindset of continual change and, and adaption in order to make sure you're delivering the right things. And it's that continual adaption, continual improvement in terms of the platform, but in terms of the, the sort of functions you sit around it again, which is vital. You spoke about governance and a lot of the customers we'll speak to will have some form of governance. It might not be too formal. It might be understaffed, it might be underskilled, but something probably exists. And we could go in there and we could say, right, this is what your governance needs to look like. And you need 45 people and 12 architects and it's just never gonna happen, is it? So we always go in with pragmatic, realistic advice about where you are now, what you can actually do now, but also what are the key improvement opportunities for the next 12, 18, 24 months to make sure that you have a, a roadmap of governance as well, to make sure that you can put the supporting frameworks around that enable you to succeed. On the previous pillars we looked at with governance and OCM, I truly believe those are just fundamental to making sure that everything keeps ticking. Um, and so that's vital. And and the last thing on here, the vision, again, we, we would have talked about this on, on all three lenses because you always have to have that focus on what is the organization about. If that starts to pivot, everything cascades from that. So everything has to be re-examined. It may well still be valid, but it's really important to, to recognize that. And if priorities start to shift underneath, not to get too caught up in the lower level, but to always remember, how does this point back up to the very top? And I think this is a real challenge and often where we've seen customers struggle over time is because they might have had some of this, they might have had that momentum and they've gone into a project or two and, and back to the point Dan raised earlier, if you see it as projects, you often can get that fatigue and, and you, you, you don't really see it as a, a product that is key to your organization, that is a strategic asset to your organization and can deliver massive amounts, but you need to treat it as such and you need to give it that focus. So Alison, anything to raise from these ones? Um, I do, but we have a question for Okay. So how do you factor in new functionality released by ServiceNow during the implementation or refresh of an instance, which may impact previously approved roadmaps? I mean, I can start with this one anyway. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you joining anyway. Um, I mean, it, it, it's... It, it all comes down to reviews of those roadmaps. So realistically, as part of talk about governance again, right, as part of governance, part of what we would expect technical teams to be doing is to be responsible for understanding what's coming down the pipe and understanding what's going to change about existing features. There may be things that are deprecated as well as things that are going to be coming down the line that change as well as things that are going to be new. And they ought to be feeding back up to the organization to say, hey, you know what? We've got something here that is new. We don't know if we can use it, but let, let's flag that up. Let's actually start putting that into the, the the sort of higher levels of the governance boards to make sure they can factor that in. Um, it also comes down to a have this planned as a review activity, right? You don't sit there, set a roadmap today. If we already said it, don't set it and forget it. But you don't put it in there today and then maybe we come back to it. Actually timetable something in. And it may be a short meeting that says, no, that's still grand. It still, it still fits fit for purpose, but that's perfect. But it gives you that opportunity to make sure you are focused and you can have that time to, to do that. And by properly giving your technical teams the time to research that, the time to understand that, that's how you're going to get the benefit from that. And obviously we can supplement that. That's that's the type of thing we do as well. As I said before, we can we can help with those demand um those governance pieces and we can help scale and help your organization be elastic. Um, but it's it's all about focus, really. I don't know if Alison or Daniel, you'd want to add anything to that. Yeah, what I would add is one of the benefits we have as partners is we do get kind of a preview of what's coming and the new features and functionalities. And even as CMAs, we get a lot of behind the scenes. Um, safe harbor, but we get, we're privy to that information early, which is nice because we can actually bring that back to Crossfuse and 
weave that into all of our customers. So it's not just those that are doing roadmaps. We have other customers we actively work with. Um, the other piece to this is we talk about greenfield customers, meaning you're brand new to service now. And then we also have customers that have been on the platform for, you know, five, 10, 15 years. And I almost argue that the people that have been on longer, this is a more important exercise for them. Greenfield, we absolutely need to know where we're going. But when you have implemented and been on for so long, it's really important to understand, okay, that was our vision then. Do we have a vision now or are we just responding to people's requests? What do we want to get out of it and what's next versus just reacting? And it's getting out of that reaction mode and using that governing board to do so. Daniel, do you have anything about... Um, the question or any of this as well. Yeah, I think the question was well answered. I'll just simply add that we also in CrossFit have product teams that are actively looking at new releases and new products. So some things that ServiceNow brings, you know, it's it's partially there, but I just need a bit more to kind of get it uh, ready for certain customers as far as implementation item or action or project. So we're also doing a bit of that behind the scenes as well, which assists in that conversation, of course, back and forth to help feed into the, the technical teams that are reviewing and looking at what's coming down the pipe. Yeah, I think I want to tie together a few things from, from very early on with the, the introduction to Crossviews and, you know, how do we stay on track? <laughs> there's obviously part of me that wants to say, well, you use us, right? You talk to us, we, we will help you stay on track. But there's, there is some truth in that. And especially when we compare to other partners, because our approach is, is not just what do you want to do great let's do it off we go we deliver that and we disappear that's not what we're interested in as a company anyway and we've got a lot of us like people on the call and like our other architects and, and senior consultants who are interested in the business they're interested in long-term business and you being successful um when you talk about the sort of the larger sort of gsi type partners as well is that often they've got a whole load of other non-service now type services there and and they are obviously interested in you as a business but also you as that prospect away from service now clearly we're interested in business you know we, if, we, if we do well with you then hopefully you do well as well and that's where we want to focus but our focus is on service now and about what we always say is we want to empower you to do things that are well within your grasp so with a lot of these things you know we will help you put you on the right route and we'll help upskill you and help show you where you can make improvements but we don't need to be coming in and doing those. A lot of those are well within your own capability to do. But what we can do is then we can help you with some more challenging things and we can help you really unlock some of those difficult things that are going to be hard for you to do. And so as that partnership, as that team, we're able to help you achieve something that is far greater than you'd be able to do on your own. And, and in our opinion, far greater than you'd be able to do with the vast majority of partners out there. And that's where I think we sit as something uh, really special in that in that environment. And so it kind of comes down to you know what to do next. And I sort of alluded to that from there. I think this is vitally important. At the moment, we, we're running, well, we've got seven engagements in EMEA, which are either in process or going to be in process before the end of the year, just for strategy and roadmaps, along with a whole number of others. The year has been massive for them, and we see that trend continuing up until into next year. Sorry, not up until, but <laughs> beyond next year as well. It's, it's fundamental to understanding where you're going and then getting the value out of the platform. And, and I can't stress my belief in that enough. So... In terms of getting in contact with us, I'll, I'll pass you back over to Alison to wrap up. All right. So what are your action steps? So obviously, contact your Crossviews account exec. If you don't have one, you can email let's talk at crossviews.com, or you can obviously find us three on LinkedIn if you need. Um, start thinking about your vision, your goals, those strategic outcomes. Those are things that we're going to be challenging you with. And it's something that you should be looking at regardless. So things that you want to accomplish within the platform, and then let us help you shape those decisions. Let us help you discover what you don't know and align that to the product that best fits those needs. And with just tacking on what Dan said on the last slide, with the economic times, the inflation, because inflation is not just in UK, it's in the US, it's in Canada, I think it's everywhere. The reason these have become so important to our customers is because it helps them plan what they're going to do and be fiscally responsible. It allows you to be very cognizant of what you're spending and be able to budget to the appropriate amount. So with that, any we have another question. So I'm going to let Dan Litton answer this one. Sure. My understanding is that ServiceNow doesn't share the roadmap beyond six months. How do we see that with building a platform strategy with your customers? Yeah. So 
the, the great thing is the ServiceNow platform is very, very flexible. Um, so a lot of our customers were actually built on top of the platform with applications that they may need down the road as well. Uh, but your point is, is, is given, you know, there is this kind of a six months roadmap there. We, we are privy and have a seat at the table to see a bit more of that beyond that as well. Keeping in mind, you know, technology, the landscape is ever shifting, ever changing. So that's always a bit of a moving target um, towards that. So um, we also have some great relationships with ServiceNow that we can kind of pull that in and ask different questions as necessary as well. So I don't know if that fully answers the question, but I'll, I'll pass it over to Dan and Allison if you want to give that a shot. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a fantastic question. It's something we we obviously have to wrestle with when we when we go in there. And I think the, the two things I'd say from there is that, well, you plan with what you know, first of all. So yes, yes, we can sometimes see some forward looking things, but they're never things that we would factor in to rely upon for, for a roadmap in that sense. We we work with what we know and we build it from there. And then it comes down to a bit about what Paul was asking in the previous question, which is, well, how do you then cater for that new functionality? And it comes to that being prepared to be flexible, right? Planning to review and planning to change. And as long as you're live for that, yes, okay, we've got a two year roadmap and that may well be the same roadmap at the end of that two years but as long as we're live to change as long as we're open to it then we review things and if it needs to change then it needs to change okay any other questions go a few minutes all right anything to add dan or dan I don't think so, particularly for mine. I think you can hopefully you can tell this is something that we are very passionate about. We feel that we sit in a space that is is unique to us, and and as a company, we are we are very excited about working closely with with our customers as partners, basically. And I hope that detail comes across because that is the way we operate. We're not distinct. We're not sort of distant from you. We're not remote. We like to be effectively a part of your organization and understand it so that. You know, we make you a success, then obviously we're a success off the back of that. But it all starts with your success at the front of it. Um, this will help you get there. So I hope that some of you want to reach out and get in touch and find out how we can help you be that success. Yep. All right. So one of our favorite moments is that light bulb moment with all of you. So we would love to help you do that. And thank you so much for joining and listening to us for the last 45 minutes. So we hope you all have a great day. Happy holidays, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thanks all. Goodbye. Thank you all.